light. What do we really know about it? We only see a small tidbit of the electromagnetic spectrum. Light and color is what's important to our perception of our visual world. Red light is on the low end of our frequency, while violet light is on the high end. Absorption and reflection is also important to our perception of the world. Let me give you some examples. The black jacket I'm wearing now looks black because the light from the sun is being entirely absorbed. Then when I take off the black jacket, the blue shirt I'm wearing now looks blue because the white light from the sun is being absorbed and then the blue light is being reflected back towards us so we perceive it as blue. Then when I take off the blue shirt, the white shirt I have underneath looks white because the white light from the sun is being entirely reflected back towards us. That way we perceive it as white. Let's explore more into the electromagnetic spectrum and how we can relate it to architecture. Let's go. Now that we're in a more suitable environment, I can talk to you more about the electromagnetic spectrum. It ranges from radio waves to gamma rays. And what we perceive is visible light, which is right in the center of it. And that ranges from red to violet. As we can see illustrated here, we can see that red and dark red have very long wavelengths, while violet and indigo have very short ones. So that shows the range of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can perceive. Now let's talk about how we can use the colors of the electromagnetic spectrum to our advantage. With light, you can use green, red, and blue, which is the primary additive colors of light, to create yellow, cyan, and magenta. And when all of those colors are mixed together, you get white light, which is what the sun gives us. Now that's very different from how we use color when you print a picture. With that, you use yellow, magenta, and cyan to create green, red, and blue, which create black, because print is very different from light itself. Now, how can we relate this to clothing or to architecture? Well, as we can see here, when you use the color of pigment with color of light, you can get very different colors, such as if we use violet with violet, you get a darker violet. But then, if you take a different color, like yellow and violet, you get scarlet. And then, let's say we take orange and yellow, and you get orange. And this can either intensify a color, or make it completely different. Like, if we take blue and orange, we create black, which is very different from what we've always known, because white light is very different from color light. Now let's use the color of pigment to the color of light in a test. As we can see, when we see red mixed with blue, which will be illustrated in a moment, we'll get this purplish black. But then when we get my blue here with orange light, we see it is black. So let's put that to the test now. Now that the lights are off, you can see that the color light behind you is changing how we perceive my little color spectrum here. We start to see these colors like this purplish black that starts to happen, and then this, this black that even happens here with my blue. As you can see, the colors are acting very differently to the color of light. Now let's use this new concept that we've just learned of using pigment with colored light to our advantage with architecture. I will illustrate you in a moment the RGB exhibition that happened in Milan design exhibition last year. What happened there is they used the different colors of light, which is the additive light, which is green, red, and blue, to create a space that's very different from each other. They used, the way they used this was using wallpaper with three different prints on it. And then, when they shine different colors of light on it, it would change the way the space was perceived. And we can use this in architecture to change how the space is used. Now we see the space with white light. As you can see, the walls look very confusing. Then, as we transition to green, we start to see 
a clarity with the walls and how the space takes on a cooler setting. Then as we transition to red, the walls change once again to this new pattern that starts to emerge. Then as we transition to magenta, we start to see an overlay of the two prints on top of each other. Then as we transition to blue, it's the coolest space of all of them and the colors of the walls have changed so much that we don't see any trace of the other colors anymore. I hope you've had fun today learning about the electromagnetic spectrum along with how we can use the color of a pigment with the color of light to change the way space is used. Now we've only covered a teeny tiny bit of the electromagnetic spectrum with visible light. Just, we've just scratched the surface of it. So now go to your public library and learn a little bit more.